Hi guys, episode two, Squirrel and Coralis are back. Mm-hmm, that's right, baby. And we've been talking about one thing, Paul, right? We need to have nicknames, like handles, I think you call them, right? I think they call them trucking handles, don't they? Trucking With handles. The, the rubber duck, obviously, is the is the classic one. I have no idea what I'm going to be called. I mean, I'm Kiralis here. You're Squirrel Nuts. I mean, what are you going to call ourselves? I was... <sighs> rubber Squirrel? Does that work? <laughs> rubber Squirrel. I don't know if that works very well, to be honest. <laughs> you know what? I think that, I think the viewer is going to help us. So, guys, please let us know, all right, in the comment section. We need to have some handles, like tracking handles. Why do you call them tracking handles? I, like, I mean... I think it's a CB thing, isn't it? It used to be CB handles. Oh. You know, when, the, when, when the truckers used to talk to you, they were on CB radio. And so they, were, they had a handle, and that's what it was. Because obviously you didn't want to give out your real name on a CB radio. A you have a handle. A rubber duck. Yeah. I remember I that movie. It was Convoy, right? I think so. Oh. And they refer to the they refer to the police as a bear. Bear. And, uh, and the yeah, they call them bears and they say ten, you know, like ten four there's a bear or something. And if there was a, a policeman in the in a helicopter, it would be a bear in the air. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can remember like parts of the movie and it was a great movie when I was growing up. When I was young kids, that was I a great movie. Convoy was really good. I, I actually enjoyed Smoking the Bandit a lot as well. Mm -hmm. Smoking the Bandit series with it. Is it Trans Am, I think he had, or a Pontiac? I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Such um, a great movies back in the days. You just don't make them like that they anymore. They don't make them anymore, kids. Same with music. Now you have Justin Bieber. <laughs> oh, God. And Justin Bieber is, is horrible. Justin Bieber. Is he still around making stuff, by the way? I have Dude, no I idea. Don't I don't know. follow these things. You know, I've read stuff. On the tweeters, and they they said that he's gonna be retiring because he's so wealthy now that he has, doesn't have to work anymore. But I'm not. I, I don't know. He can't still piss me off for reason unknown. He's like the one of the guys which you. Not that I'm you know. Not that I'm jealous of Justin Bieber. N no, no, no. I. I'm you know, jealous of his bank account. Maybe bank account, but he seems to be such a douche. If you know what I mean. Oh, he really does. He, he doesn't does, seem he does. to be a nice guy whatsoever. No. No, he's not. I don't think he is at all. He's, he's always like punching photographers and stuff, and generally just acting like a dick. I think, and, yeah. uh, and he's still really popular with the girls. It's just like, what? How does this work? <laughs> I think it transforms people. You know, as soon as they get famous and rich, I'm not saying all people are like that, but a lot of people, like as soon as they get a, a recognition and wealth, they turn douche. Why is that? Yeah, I, I have. I have no idea. Maybe they were always were a douche and then and they were just basically acting nice just to, until they got famous and then the real character came out. Yeah, that's that's, tra that's strange. Oh, we got a guy. He's on an empty trailer. I like him anyhow though. <laughs> What's Dude, he moving? He's gonna get paid for that. Did you hear that Microsoft bought Mojang today? That's incredible news. I mean, there was a rumor last week but mm -hmm. I was like, hmm, how true is this then? Yeah, was, we but, were around two billion, and two point five billion is the final amount. Two point five billion. Uh, I don't know. It's mind blowing. It, was it two guys who started Mojang? Was it uh, Notch and Carl or something? I think it was three uh, or something. So I mean, how much money? Speeding offense. Slow down, buddy. Oh, how much money are they going to get when they walk out of that room? 2.5 billion dollars. Now I have no idea. I don't think they have to worry about work anymore in their lives if they don't want to work. But uh, it's that's just. A, I mean, the amount of money, incredible, staggering. What do you think it means for Minecraft, though? I mean, you know, I was, I was a bit, bit worried last week when I heard the rumor and stuff because Microsoft might be a bit douche about you know how the content is is like uh, how the content is. Uh, up on YouTube and it's monetized and stuff like that, but I don't think they will change it. Uh, to be honest, uh, to be fair, because of the community itself, I think they kind of want to keep the community growing. And the only f way to keep the community growing is, is to you know do YouTubers. Oh, look at the pink truck! <gasps> pink truck. Uh, pink Scania. Pink That's Scania. Insane. But I don't think I don't I don't think they will touch the community whatsoever in YouTube. Uh, I mean, it kind of makes what Minecraft is today. No, they. they I mean. That's not even a concern as far as I'm concerned. I, 
they've got all kinds of games on YouTube. They know it's Microsoft are really good at marketing, and they know that you know people who make videos on YouTube of Minecraft are just promoting the game. Um, so they're not going to stop that. What I would be a bit more worried about is like at Mojang, obviously when the company started up and you had Notch and stuff in charge of it the, the culture was very kind of we're doing something really cool and we're all free and we can if we want to add this to the game because we like the idea of it then we can just add it whereas now you're going to have these kind of corporate suit guys from Microsoft making all the decisions about what goes into the game and the culture at Mojang is going to change and I just wonder if some of the people there will not like it and then ultimately I think this isn't for me anymore. Yeah. yeah, there's something special about indie companies. I love indie games. Uh, basically, exactly. what, what indie games does, which is really good, because they're pretty small companies, most of them. They really listen to the community. Like, you know, you have like so close feedback and it's, it's kind of like a close relationship with the company itself and, and, the, and the gamer. As soon as they tr turn to those big mog mog moguls, yeah, I think you say, right? It, kind of transforms yeah I mean I think you know corporate companies are all about the they've got shareholders and mm -hmm. it's all about the bottom line figure at the end of the day and indie companies are literally just not like that and yeah it's gonna be a big change I mean I think it will mean good things and bad things for Minecraft in the long run um, but whether I think it will be a change some people will like it some people won't I, I do worry about the mod market, though. I mean, certainly Minecraft's big in modding, and, Minecraft, um, and Microsoft might try to to stop that modding, even part. monetize it, or you know what I mean. They might try and get in on that act a bit. Yeah, but it's a. I mean, I I hardly play vanilla Minecraft whatsoever anymore. I just play modded Minecraft because yeah. because uh, because of the mods. Uh, you know, there's so much more possibilities. The cool thing would be if they created Minecraft too. I mean, you know, Minecraft with the forest graphics, for example. What, if Microsoft basically took what's there and just made it better? Yeah, I'm not saying like this year, next year, maybe like in two, three years time. Just just remake the whole engine, make it something which is like graphic-wise breathtaking. Probably. As I the reckon they will. I mean, we've been talking about playing, uh, what was it called? Seven Days to Die, right? Seven Days to Die, which is... Uh I did play that a while ago, but I think it's changed quite a lot recently. I've been watching some streams, and the graphics has definitely changed. Uh, better graphics, there's more stuff to do, so I mean... I, f I think the whole aspect of, like, zombies and stuff, and, like, the, the possibility to craft stuff, mine stuff, I mean, it just keeps growing. And this is it, I mean, people compared it to Minecraft when it came out, and, you know, people were saying, hang on a minute, it's not really like Minecraft, just because it's blocky in 3D and has a bit of crafting in, you know, it's fundamentally a different game, but I think recently, I, I don't know, I mean, you've got zombies and you have to build a place to live, don't you? You have to sort of take what's in the in the world, break it all down into sort of bits of metal and glass and stuff, and then construct doors and buildings and just keep out the hordes of zombies that get really, really nasty at night. I mean, that's the general principle, isn't it? Survive, basically. It's a survival game, basically like Minecraft combined with O oh, engine malfunction, dang it, uh, and DayZ. Or Infest I think it was a game called Infestation, right, as well, which was, was called War Z before. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Which kind of changed names, I guess. But, uh, the War Z. War Z game. The infamous War Z. Have you played it? I didn't. I think when it came out, didn't they basically take a whole lot of orders and then rip everybody off? It was something strange with the game, yeah, I remember that. They they kept all their money and stuff, yeah. It, was, it wasn't it was a good launch, let's put it that way. Damn. <laughs> damn so they changed damn. the name. Infestation, yeah. I'll tell you what, it's another good game. I don't know if you've played it or not. It's called Space Engineers. I'm not a space guy myself, so I haven't. But I've seen people play it and it seems to be pretty, pretty, pretty beastly when it comes to building stuff and creating stuff. And having your spaceship and stuff. I haven't really played it. It's that's uh, the modding in that is going mental. He's about to add. He's about to make it so that mods can mod authors can actually script things in as well, so they can make these control blocks and then they can write code in C sharp behind it, and then make it do really cool stuff. So who knows where that's going to go? But yeah, it's kind of like Minecraft in space almost, except it doesn't have all the monsters and things. 
this is why I love indie companies. I mean, the possibilities they've got. And the community. I mean, stuff like that, you know what? Before, before the interwebs, kids, it was hard for indie yeah. companies. Because uh, everything you had was to be purchased in a shop. And it was kind of dang expensive and it was really hard to combine, come by. Today, when the, inter the internet exists, I mean, it's so... Not, I'm not saying it's easy for... Oops. Not easy for, for like, indie companies to, to put out a game or game developers, but it's so much easier. Well, you the whole Steam green light thing has transformed... Oh, yeah. You know, in indie companies, hasn't it? Whereas before, they had to try and get noticed and then they'd have to market it themselves and they'd have to put it on the website and hope people noticed it. Now, they put it on Steam green lights and... You know, it gets such a massive boost, and then the platform they can deliver the game over digitally, uh, and then you've got the Kickstarter campaign, so they can get the money, uh -huh. and so you you just seen a massive explosion in indie games, which is nice, which is absolutely amazing to have. However, and this is the downside, I think, and you know this because you you've started playing the game now, the Forest. Ooh, right. Yeah, so yes, the yes, yes. Forest is like they're updating every two weeks. So there's a patch comes out every two weeks. So you know, I made five videos in the series, and then the patch came out, and it broke my save game. I'm now spawning underground. So you could argue that that game <laughs> possibly should not be on Steam yet because it's a bit too alpha. But I guess that they need some type of funding for for continuing the project. The only thing I'm worried about in the forest, as it is an alpha now, is still an alpha. I mean, the beta has come, and then it's going to be a retail version of it. But I mean, people have seen it, people played it. Uh, I mean, the, the final version of the Speed forest. Camera. Oops, what the hell is that going to con contain? I mean, you know, because people have been experiencing it since the alpha. I mean, they need to really drastic change is something for the, for the retail version or final version of the game. Yeah, that's true. Because otherwise it's going to be like, oh no, I've played it. I've done that. Yeah, I mean, quite the, the actual area that you can explore at the moment uh, in the forest is not, is not vast. You can sort of walk from one side of the map to the other in a matter of 10 minutes, probably. And, but you can see a huge mountain in the distance which you can't get to yet so mm -hmm. obviously they're going to build that out and they're going to build the story out like when you're on that plane and you crashed presumably that was your son next to you mm -hmm. yeah so so okay we know that there was, there was some event which caused the plane to come down and we saw those cannibalistic mutant dudes whatever you call them take your son away but is he still alive is he going to be coming back as a cannibal um, you know is he would it be like Lord of the Flies and when you find him he's actually in charge of the whole thing like he's running the whole mutant show is, who knows where it's going to go is Timmy as, as they, they call him now because of PewDiePie is he in oh, charge right. nobody knows no but yeah <laughs> I, I guess there's an aspect to the game I kind of li would like to have the multiplayer aspect uh, yeah, in the game as well I mean doing that game multiplayer would be pretty oh, decent yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, I agree I mean the idea of you know, being on this island uh, and just a few of you, a few survivors, and you've got obviously large numbers of these mutant creatures and God knows what else kicking around, and you've got to. I mean, it, day one is important in the forest, isn't it? It's all about trying to hunker down for the night. A bit like Minecraft, really. You've got mm -hmm. to find yourself a spot to survive. You've got to get your food and your water sorted and your shelter. And that's no different, but being multiplayer, it'd be a really cool game to put multiplayer, actually. Yeah, I, I kind of I kind of loved the thing they're gonna ex ex extend the map. That would be pretty awesome. The thing I would I would love to see in a game like that. You know, when you finally find your son and stuff like that, time to go home. You build something to get home, or you get found by by someone and they help you out. That the whole world has been taken over. Can you just imagine having like a big cities <laughs> with dead graphics, <laughs> basically like Seven Days to Die, something like that in a scenario where you have a big city but it's totally empty. And you need to avoid stuff. You need to search through houses. I mean, something like that would be so freaking awesome. But you know, you never know. Yeah, like an urban setting. Yeah, they could carry it on that way. Yeah. The possibilities are endless. A rubber duck, a rubber, rubber, rubber squirrel, right? <laughs> rubber, Not officially. Rubber, rubber squirrel. No, we're gonna, what? we're gonna see. We've got to see what the subs say. They need to suggest a name for me and a name for you. I'll, I'll be interested to see what they come up with for you, actually. Like, if you got any... Like, they they call me Squirrel or Paul. Do they just call you Corrales? Or have you got, like, an alternative uh, name that they nope, call you? just Corrales. Just Corrales. Right. I'm, I'm kind of I'm gonna, I'm gonna curious. How the hell did you end up being called Squirrel Nuts? <laughs> How many times? Oh, wow. Um, basically, I mean... 
I like squirrels. I mean, I was looking for a name. It all started when I was look when I was trying to create a PlayStation Three name from you know just had to create an account. I was trying to think of a name, and um, does it? I don't know if they have this phrase where you are, but in England there's a phrase called the dog's bollocks. Have you heard of that? I've heard it. I don't think we we use it in Sweden. Okay, so basically it's just this weird phrase where if you say something is the dog's bollocks right which is obviously his testicles mm -hmm. if you say something is the dog's bollocks it's like saying it, it it's another phrase is the bee's knees the dog's bollocks the bee's knees in other words it's awesome it's absolutely brilliant so i kind of took the dog's bollocks and ended up with the squirrel's nuts <laughs> that's, that's somehow it that i don't know how i got there but that's kind of what <laughs> happened um i like squirrels and you I like nuts. squirrels nuts. Yeah, I do like nuts actually. <laughs> I really like <laughs> cashew nuts. Um, and, I, and somehow I ended up with the squirrels nuts. But, and here's the kicker. This is how it ended up as the squirrels nuts. Here's the kicker. So it was fire miles on PlayStation. And then I decided to create a YouTube channel and I decided to create an Xbox Live account. And both of them are limited to 15 characters. So I had to shorten my name, which was 16 characters down to 15. So I changed the to duh, and duh. we ended up with duh squirrels nuts. Duh squirrels nuts, yeah, that's an amazing and, story. And that's the story of how I got my name. What about you? What was Corrales name? Where does that come from? Is it like a, does it have a meaning, or did you just make you that word what? up, or what? When I started playing World of Warcraft, back, back in the day, uh, in the, in the, like, I even played the beta of World of Warcraft. I didn't play it back then, that was a bit too far for me. But, but I needed a name for my warrior, so... I kind of took parts of my of my real name and kind of changed some letters backwards and stuff like that and basically it became Kiralis. So I made my YouTube account back then and called it Kiralis. And I, when I started YouTube uh, many years later, I just kept the channel and kept going. So it's kind nice. of kind of strange seeing people taking my name and kind of changing it a bit, you know, with a number or something because it's still mm -hmm. my real name, but they don't really know that. So it's kind of like, hey, <laughs> yeah, you're using my real name. But <laughs> I'm, cool. I don't, I'm not, I'm not called Corrales, but if you just change a few letters and stuff like that, it's going to become my real name. So now That's a good now name. Everybody's going to be cracking down on my name. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, it's an easy name to say, isn't it? it it's Corrales. It just kind of rolls Corrales. off the tongue. Yeah. Um, did you know why PewDiePie got his name? I have no idea. So, um, a PewDiePie, if you actually look at the spelling of it, it's PewDiePie, right? And originally wanted to create his channel as Pew Die, as in Pew Die, yeah? Pew Die. Shoot somebody and you die. Pew Die. But he couldn't because it was already gone. So he thought, what else can I do to my name apart from Pew Die? And he thought, oh, I like pies. I'll call myself Pew Die Pie. <laughs> so everybody says Pew D Pie, but it's Pew Die Pie. But that's where the name came from. Pew Die Pie. Pew Die Pie. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Dude, he's, he's got big. He's, his channel is is brutal i mean the Isn't size like number one on youtube or something mm -hmm. it's ridiculous ridiculously big it's nuts oh there's a guy there's a guy coming we should get off at the next parking stop um, oh yeah hopefully we're gonna manage so by the way trip information we're still going from sheffield this right to Wuj, or as paul says is Luj. uh <laughs> Lud lodge in poland and um and we got 422 kilometers. That's that's kilometers, everybody, not miles. We don't use miles in this game. So it's kilometers. And we're going to arrive in the next episode, right, Paul? That's right, episode three. So we will have covered 1,200 kilometers of driving. And we've got just over 400 left. You know what? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to ask it. Because usually when I do my series of your track, I just do a Q&A, right? But I gotta ask the viewers, what do you think about these guys? Like, I mean, we're just talking a bunch of topics. If you want us to continue about that. Because, I mean, otherwise it would be pretty bland. Because, I mean, otherwise it's just gonna be, okay, I can see a sign. Okay, there's a track. There's a tree. I mean, that wouldn't be cool. We should, that we should actually, if they, if they like the idea of us talking about topics, then we should totally get some kind of suggestion box thing going and let people come in and we'll just pick the best ones and go, you know, that's not a bad suggestion and we'll just talk about that. That would be amazing. That would be amazing, having like a topic. Okay, in this yeah. episode we're going to cover this topic and we're just going to be discussing the topic and just chilling, relaxing. This is a really chilled game though. It's not a hyped game. It's a chilled game. That, 
that's the cool thing about this game, isn't it? Is it's one of those games because like a lot of games, like shootery games, they're quite stressful to play, aren't they? Like you take Counter Strike or something, it requires focus, mm -hmm. and when you finish it, you feel tired. You play this game, <laughs> you, you just, just feel relaxed. Oh, it is like a spa for me. <laughs> You sat at home with your feet in the little foot bar, aren't you? And just kind of <laughs> just, just looking at the along. scenery, yeah. And today I've been in like four countries already. So it's pretty, pretty decent, I guess. You know, you know what I mean, I mean right? You just visited all the cities in Europe and you just chilled from your from your couch back at home. It, I'm getting concerned that we're going to get to the destination without parking. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's got to be at least at the border is going to be going to be a parking. Yeah, that's true. You shouldn't That's worry true. about that. We got this. Hope well. <laughs> I really do hope so. Just get a bit of border crossing. I can't see any up ahead though, but we are actually pulling off the motorway now. What you call we it? Are. Motorway, highway, speedway. We call it we call it motorway in the UK. I think Americans call it the highway or freeway. Um, what did they have a name for that in Sweden or? It's called Autobahn. No, that's, that's actually Ausfahrt. That's actually in German, but they call it Motorweg in Sweden, so which is basically motorway. Right, yeah. Yeah, Autobahn's in German, isn't it? Autobahn, yeah. And it's that's nuts. Autobahn. An Autobahn. Dude, I went to Gamescom, and uh, the, when I was going back, going back to, to, to the airport in, uh, in Dortmund, I had to order a, a cab, right? So I ordered a cab. And I stood outside the hotel waiting for it, and this, a this uh, Mercedes AMG pulled up. Black, you know, oh. really awesome. And, and you know, I was like, that's a, that's a damn nice car. Damn, that's a nice car. <laughs> and then, you know, the driver went into the hotel and stuff like that. And, like, a quarter later, I, I went into to the reception just because asking for my, for my cab. Where's the cab at? And they're like, oh, your driver's been sitting here waiting for, for like, uh, 20 minutes. And it's the guy with the Mercedes AMG. And, no. I'm like, and I'm like, is that my cab? And it's like, yep, let's go. Are you kidding and, me? And then out on the autobahn, dude, it, that was crazy. That was insane. Did he, did he put his foot down? Oh, he did. Oh, he did. <gasps> Why do they have cabs like that in my country? That's insane. Mercedes oh, AMG so is a cab. I think it was like a private cab company. It was nothing like you know, which is like like local. They still had like a bunch of Mercedes as cab as, as cab cars because that's a kind of like a normal car I guess in Germany for to, to be a, having a cab company in but this was like a private thing I was at a kind of a hotel and booked it for me so it was like no. insane 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 that, dude I want to experience that <laughs> on the autobahn you know what nobody can stop you because it's an autobahn you can drive how fast you want so I mean yeah yeah that that trip went pretty fast to the airport yeah the gyms have got that bit right mm -hmm. definitely but uh, then again you know what at some some people shouldn't be driving that fast so enough said that's true. Yeah, you, you, oh. Haven't you seen those accidents, by the way, uh, on the autobahn when uh, when people slam into trucks which are parked on the hard shoulder mm. or whatnot? Horrible. Absolutely gross. Carnage. Just complete wreck. There's nothing left of them. No. Yeah, it's just crazy. Kids, don't, don't Google it, okay? But it's, <laughs> nice. it's, it's not nice. It Dude. ain't nice. Yep. Was, oh! Where's was the parking space? <laughs> it's here. It's coming, dude. It's coming. Do are you, you sure? Yep. Here we go. Hey! 500 meters. How far are you behind me? I'm just on about sort of 80 meters, maybe. See? I love the European servers. It works beautifully well. Oh, yeah, the American was so choppy. This is just yeah. so smooth. I okay. think if it had been in the States, it would have been fine. But because we're obviously in Europe, it's, it wasn't like, the best experience for us, personally. Uh-uh. Okay. Everybody, we got 294 kilometers left to our final destination, which will happen in episode 3 of this journey. And I just got an engine malfunction as soon as I pulled in. <laughs> That's awesome, what a timing! <laughs> it's a pity you can't get a bit of servicing oh. done on your truck while you're here. It's awesome. I'm just gonna pull in right next to you, like that. And since we're kind of recording this in one go, and that is because of the of the of the time limit on the shipping, and otherwise we're gonna get a delayed penalty and stuff. It's really hard t for us to take in feedback which you send us after each episode. But after episode three, please feel free to leave all the feedback you can. Absolutely, absolutely. But uh, for now, I think we'll have to say that's the end of episode two, and in the final episode, we'll do three hundred kilometers as we go to. 
Lodz. Lodz. How do you say it again? We're going to Lodz in Poland, everybody. <laughs> Łódź. Łódź. <laughs> As we arrive there, you're going to be fluent Polish-speaking person. Trust I'll me. be speaking Polish by the time we get there. Łódź. Anyway, until the next episode. See everybody. Thank you so, so much for watching. I like your favorite. Yes. And check out Squirrel Nuts. There's a link in the description. Thank you and bye. And Corrales. <laughs> and Corrales. <laughs> Thank you and bye-bye, guys. Later.